Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another stock pick of the day. It is December 21st. We are going to take a look at Black & Decker, right? There's my Black & Decker drill. I have a lot of Black & Decker tools. I am a firm believer, just like Warren Buffett, you should invest in what you know. So Black & Decker is a tool that I use. A, I am a consumer of their products, so am I, I am familiar with what they do. And let's jump right in and take a look at them. All right, building the trust of those who build and shape the world around us. We're not going to read this all, but one of the major focuses I want to have is on their brands. DeWalt, that was the, the drill, uh, drill that I just picked up there. DeWalt, Black & Decker, obviously, Craftsman, Stanley, Lennox, Cub Cadet, Hustler, Troy Built are some of their brands that they have. Headquartered in the USA, Stanley Black & Decker provides the tools and innovative solutions you can trust to get the job done. And we have since 1843. That is another one I wanted to focus on. 1843, so another company that has been around for well over 100 years, almost 200 years, coming up on 200 years, right? So another one that has weathered the storms, right? The Great Depression, recessions, all the recessions. Every, it seems like every decade we have a recession, right? There was a oil crisis in the 70s, the 80s there was a recession, 90s. Uh, dot com bubble end of the 90s into 2000s we had the housing crash in, in 2008 to 2010 uh, currently we're in a recession in my opinion even though uh, some people claim we're not uh, just because the the economy is going well as far as jobs go but again uh, another one that has weathered the storm so i think they're going to come out the other side a lot of people use their products in the construction industry which is the industry i work in uh, you know you'll you'll see these dewalts all over craftsmen specifically i have a lot of craftsmen tool as well stanley black and decker right cub cadets if you're a, a maintenance guy lawn maintenance for example i know uh, uh, landscapers you know might use cub cadet so troy built my uh, my snow blower is a troy built so a lot of their brands you're probably familiar with and have in your garage if you're a handyman so to speak like myself and if you want to know more about them, check them out at www.stanleyblackanddecker.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this from. If you want to pause here and read the rest of this, or like I said, pause and go check them out on your computer there, go ahead and do that. Now over to why we are looking at them. There was a lot of green in my portfolio today. I don't know about yours, uh, but this was one that was down, so I thought I would cover them. I do own them. I am long Stanley Black & Decker. It was actually one of the... Uh, one of the companies that I focused on for December stocks to buy. If you didn't catch that video, it may be a little dated now, but uh, this is one that I was going to focus on. So you'll see my position here in a little bit. It is a newer position in my portfolio that I am going to be building out over time. Closed out the day at $73.27. We are talking about Stanley Black & Decker, ticker SWK. Out of the industrial sector, even though really, in my opinion, this is more of a, a consumer discretionary right this is one that will pull back during recessionary times because it is a consumer discretionary if you don't need to buy new tools you're not going to right it's not a uh, one of those items that you're going to go out and buy all the time unless you have a specific use for it right 52-week range as low as $70.24 as high as $196.52 obviously at 73.27 it is much closer to that 52-week low they have an average volume of 1.9 million. Today was 1.7. Uh, quite a bit of selling, it looks like. Anytime you're down, obviously, right? A lot of selling started out, it looks like, at 74.63 and the, the day at 73.27. Maybe a little bit of a uh, recovery here in the after hours, at least as of 4.35, whenever I started pulling this information. Market cap of 10.84 billion, a beta of 1.25. So they are more volatile than the overall market. And you can see right that volatility throughout the day. PE ratio of 19.8. That is a little elevated, even though I think a lot of times this particular company does sell at a premium, but I would like to see this a little lower. Earnings per share of 3.7 and earnings date. Their next one is February 2nd. They do pay out $3.20 uh, annually, so divide by four. They are a quarterly payer. You'll see that here, uh, the quarterly payments per share in a moment. They have a very nice dividend yield at 4.29. Obviously, if they continued to pull back, that would go up. And their last ex-dividend date was November 30th. So if you were to buy them now, you would not get their next dividend. It may have already been paid out, actually. 
and their one year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information, not affiliated with Yahoo Finance, just where I like to go for information. They have a one year target estimate of $83.57 per share. So it does speak to some upside price appreciation as far as the stock price goes. Next, we'll jump over to stockanalysis.com and the 25 stock analysts, they've had to take a look at this. They actually call it a consensus hold, though it is close to a buy here, according to what they are saying. Uh, I am, a, again, I'm a buyer. I'm going to buy this as long as it stays uh, below my cost basis. I'm going to keep dollar cost averaging into this probably over the next year until I get it to a position that, I, that I'm comfortable with. But the reason that they are probably saying hold is they see further downside, right? Uh, 6969, which would be a 4.89% decrease from where it currently sits. If it hit their average cost, $85.10, that would be a 16.15% increase in stock price and a high estimate of $105, which would be a 43.31% 43 increase from where it currently sits. All the while, you would be collecting that 4 plus percent dividend yield if you were to buy them today. So that is what we have from stockanalysis.com. Let's look at my position here. As I stated, relatively new position, SWK. I have four shares, right? I bought it a couple times. I'm doing about two shares each time I pick these up, and I am picking them up so long as they are under my cost basis. Uh, $76.91. Currently, they are $73.27, right? I am down 4.74% on this position, $307.65 into this position currently sits at $293.08 worth of value. So again, I don't mind seeing the red. This just means that I'm going to be able to pick this up cheaper. I'll be able to decrease this cost basis. I'll be able to increase my dividend yield and increase my potential future returns. And if it dropped to 69 or in the 60s, I would continue to dollar cost average and do the same thing. Decrease this cost basis, all right? Increase my future return and increase my future, uh, my dividend yield. And here you can see quarterly payer, as we said, payout ratio pretty low at 32.90. So it gives them a lot of runway to be able to keep increasing this dividend yield over time. They do have a decent dividend growth, 6.71. But if the, I would say the only thing to maybe watch on this, if it stays pulled back for a significant amount of time and uh, the economy does slow significantly, they may slow this dividend growth down, right? It's 6.71% 6, 7, 6 is not bad. Uh, low payout, so they have a lot of room to go, but sometimes they will slow down their payout. You can see uh, back in June, it looks like their last payout was 79 cents and then they raised it to 80 cents. This was before I owned it. And when I looked at this, if you go look uh, this up here, this is from stockanalysis.com. If you go look up the dividend, actually they had a higher yield from 70 to 79 cents the year before. So uh, looks like they may have slowed it down a little bit this year from the previous year already. So that is it. These are quick hitters trying to find value in the market for you and myself on green days like today. It is nice to see the portfolio go up, but it is harder to find the value on, in the market. A lot of stocks still are presenting a lot of value, uh, a lot of pullbacks here this week. So that is nice to see, at least for me. I know some people freak out whenever their uh, portfolios go down. That is not the case for me. I don't mind the red, like I said. Uh, but as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Join me on this journey to financial freedom. Uh, hopefully you are on your own journey as well. And drop a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think of Stanley Black & Decker. Is it in your portfolio? Is it one you're looking to add? Is it on your watch list? I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, suggestions for future topics, or constructive criticism. Go ahead and drop it all down below. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you're having a great week and happy holidays to all of you out there. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. Can lose money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria. Or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor. And if you stuck around this long, Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Appreciate it. Have a good one.